So finally it's here, MIDI Guitar 3. You've all been waiting, I know. Uh, you get to try it out in this beta version, help us out with the things that perhaps needs fixing. I'll do the best I can in this video to explain the basic concepts and functionalities just so you guys can dive in and get started. Also for those that haven't used uh, MIDI guitar at all, these concepts might be of some use to you as well. The basic idea is of course that you're going to use your regular guitar with your regular pickups. You just connect the jack on your guitar to your audio interface and you're off. The software does the rest. It turns your guitar audio into MIDI. But in this case, as opposed to the earlier version, it turns it into the extended version of MIDI called MPE. And with that comes polyphonic bands, which finally allows us as guitar players to play also virtual guitars and have that sound quite real, among other things, of course. We have control over CC74 for each note, which could be described as having access to a mod wheel for each note that we play that we can assign to whatever we like. I'll go into how this is done a little later. But first of all, let's have a look at the new interface. The connectivity, the modularity, and as no small part of the package, all the possibilities to modulation that we have in here right now. Stuff I know you're gonna love, so let's not waste any time. Oh, here goes. Okay, so the first thing you might want to check out is the cogwheel up here. You have your audio devices settings. You should use uh, the same for in and out, of course, and you have a channel setting here. You also have your graphics settings, your troubleshooting log, and your data folder here. This is the first patch that you'll come across when you open up MIDI Guitar 3 for the first time. It's the introduction patch, and it's made up of one chain in this case with a transposer, a sustain pedal, a test synth, and a polytuner. Each of these are modules, and I would call these pedals since they have these buttons on them as well. So we're going to be talking about patches, chains, modules, and pedals. But let's start here. Here's where the magic happens. Here is where the audio signal comes in and gets interpreted and split up into four different parts. A strike part, a pressure part, a brightness part, and a glide part. And if you feel somewhat unsure of what those terms might mean, these terms are already established with the existing MPE synths that we have. So this is Equator from Roly, and you can see strike here, glide, slide is what we call brightness or CC74 pressure. Lift is something that we don't make use of. Let's get back to our own interface. The things that you can do here is decide if you want a polyphonic expressive kind of tracking, if you want a monophonic tracking, or if you want a polyphonic with no bends kind of tracking. The next thing you see here is an input gain. You really shouldn't use input gain for anything. It's here, but it should stay at zero decibels because otherwise you run the risk of losing out on dynamic range if you start fiddling with this input gain here. The best way to adjust your gain is to go to your audio interface and do it there. Furthermore, we have a gate here. Anything above will come through and be interpreted. Anything below will not sound at all. So I was talking about the incoming audio splitting up in four parts here. If we want to get a visual representation of what this kind of means, let's go for the modulator. All of these are part of the same sound. Strike, for instance, is a momentary value. It tells us how hard did I strike that string at that time. Nothing else. If I want to see what happens with uh, the velocity over time, as I strike the string and let it ring out, I can look at pressure. That envelope represents the decaying of the energy from the string as it stops vibrating. The brightness envelope should really reflect stuff like am I palm muting, what strings am I playing on, and every aspect of the playing where brightness could have some play 
that also makes for a totally unique envelope for opening and closing filters and stuff like this. As for glide, there is no envelope, it wouldn't make any sense. We can of course connect any of these envelopes to Glide and have it be affected by any other means, but it's not interesting in this case. If we want to look at what kind of envelopes we have at our disposal right now. ADSR, we have strike pressure, brightness from the guitar, but we also have Wobble, which is a combination of two different kinds. We have Mach sine wave, we have square and we have invert, uh, which all come in handy for different kinds of stuff. But the main point of the modulator is of course not to work as a visualizer for the envelope. It's to actually modulate parameters that we're talking about. The pressure curve, for instance. My guitar has a kind of predictable and in itself pretty boring velocity profile when it comes to triggering notes. I mean, you have this. A straight connection like this from pressure to pressure means that you're passing along what is interpreted as pressure from the guitar to the pressure in the test synth in this case. But it gives me two handles here that I can do something with. I can manipulate these handles in some way to modulate the way the pressure is received in the synth. If we look at how this minimum value is below the maximum value at this point, if I just do the opposite and raise it above, the pressure envelope is inverted and totally different. So it's gonna start low and swell to max. As opposed to max above, and minimum below, we'll get the traditional guitar profile. Having looked at the modulators leads me to this part, which has to do with external controllers. Using any external MIDI controller should be as easy as just connecting it and it should show up actually in MIDI Guitar 3. So I'll show you here with my laptop. You can see that it says no MIDI controller and breath controller connected. Just see to that all your expression controllers are connected to the computer and they should show up. Any controller that I wanna use, I just go in here, click the learn DC, step on it, and you have connection at once. You can have all your controllers connected always at all times and it saves to your patches. So here I can step through the list of my external controllers that I have connected. My audio interface, I have my breath controller, my video host, pedal controller, Sensel Morph. I'm gonna stay with any MIDI controller because it allows for me to use all MIDI controllers at once. So let's put all of the things we know now into good use and build ourselves a patch. To create a new patch, you can do either of two things. You can go to the patch name window here, click, and you have new patch up here. But you can also go to new up here. Let's move this around a bit. Any patch can be shown in either one, two or three rows like this. One, two rows and three rows. So any patch can be built with up to three chains with six modules or pedals in each of these. Okay, uh, modules and pedals you say what was that again? So let's go in, click on one of these slots. Then you'll see MIDI machines, all modules and pedals. We have dynamics, we have sustain, transpose, modulators, bass filter, pitch filter, scale filter, strike filter, vibrato, retuning, sequencer, arpeggiator, shredder, MIDI output and polytuner right now. Uh, for instruments, we're talking about a sampler, we don't have that yet in the beta version, but with the test synth you have seen. The rest are my own personal VSTs and VSTIs. So the first effects here in this list are the MIDI guitar 3 effects. These are the deep expressor, the delay, the sweet spot, the cabinet, the reverb, the mute, the backing track and the record wave files. The rest are my third party plugins, of course. These are all the modules and the pedals that I have access to for building any sort of patch. These slots can contain either 
audio effects or MIDI effects. There's no specific chain for audio or MIDI. Everything works in all three of them. They all meet in the mixer, of course, and then you have a chain afterwards called master, in which you probably will add stuff like a master reverb or something to affect the whole patch. So I won't be able to go over all things in detail in this first introduction, but let's look at a blank patch like this. This is a new patch. Obviously this fader is up, which means that we have a sound in and it's on the middle chain here. If I have nothing else on this, the guitar will uh, go out through the mixer and into this stock reverb in this case. But as soon as I pull up any sort of instrument, you won't hear the guitar anymore. It takes priority over the audio part, but I can mute this and have it be an audio channel again. So I could in practice have some audio effects behind this instrument, but as soon as I click and activate this instrument again, it becomes a MIDI channel. So this way you can actually have a few different functionalities and use some pedals for on and off and have more than three possibilities just because you only have three chains. So you can split it up to have six different anythings. The things we need to look at when we start working with any of these instruments. Check the MPE settings, check the band range setting and check if you want to use whatever they have associated with CC74 or whatever they have associated with brightness or slide depending on what they call that. It's not every synth that uses anything for CC74. Therefore, it's off by default for MIDI Guitar 3. If you want to get under the hood of any of these instruments, there's a way to perhaps use controllers to connect to the inside of any of these instruments. You have these four boxes here. Uh, a button here that I move will be represented by a button here. And then you can, of course, connect to it as easy as this. And then I have my pedal here controlling this macro in Falcon. Don't forget to save your patch, of course, up here. Some name. And you find your Falcon mod. So I really hope that this provides enough of a background for you to get started. Uh, you probably know where most of the stuff is. I'm guaranteed to come back with some examples on how to set up in terms of using polyphonic bands and help you out with anything that you might have questions about. So I'll be super happy to hear any suggestions on what you want me to cover in the coming videos in terms of how to set up or what kind of functions you are looking for but can't find or whatever. This has been a long journey and I'm super happy to be able to invite you all to take part of it now. So this has to be it for now. Bye and see ya.